Okay, going through this review. Um, section 1.1, identify population and sample. Remember, population is the whole group. So, the sample would be 1,503 U.S. adults, and the population would be all U.S. adults. Okay? If we look at number two, the sample would be 38 nurses working in the San Francisco area. And the population would be all nurses working in the San Francisco area. Number three, uh, all U.S. adults would be the population. And the sample would be 2,311 U.S. adults. Number four, 186 U.S. adults is the sample, and the population is all U.S. adults. Well, it would be all U.S. adults aged 25 to 29, and the sample is all U.S. or the sample is 186 U.S. adults 25 to 29. That's the first four. Determine whether it's a parameter or a statistic. Remember that a parameter is for an entire population. A statistic is just for a sample. So, so for number five, it says Major League Baseball teams. So that's the total number of teams. This one tells you right away that it's going to be a statistic. Because it's a survey of a thousand U.S. adults. There aren't only one thousand U.S. adults. Okay. Recent study of math majors at a university. This would be a parameter. Because it says it's studying the, all the math majors. This one says the word sample in it, so you know it's a statistic. Number nine, which part of the survey described in exercise three represents the descriptive branch of statistics? So if we go back up and look at number three, looking for the, dis the descriptive, um, it would be that 84% uh, of the 2,311 U.S. adults, 84% of all U.S. adults would have seen a health provider. Number 10, which part of the survey described in exercise 4 represents the descriptive branch? That would be 76% of the 186 adults surveyed who read a book. And if you made an inference, you would say around 76% of U.S. adults ages 25 to 29, read a book in the past 12 months. So we're taking that basic and expanding it out to the entire population. Tell whether it's qualitative or quantitative data. The ages of a sample of 350 employees of a software company. That would be quantitative. Giving us the ages of those employees. The zip codes of a sample of 200 customers would be qualitative. Even though zip codes are numbers, the numbers don't stand for anything. It's not like I can take Aliquippa's zip code 15009 and subtract it from Beaver Falls. 15010. Doesn't make sense. Revenues of the companies, that would be quants. And marital status, whether they're single, married, divorced, that would be qualitative. Okay. Number 15. Remember we had nominal, interval, ratio. Uh, there's another one. Nominal, 
ordinal interval in ratio. Daily high temperatures in degrees, that would be interval. The reason it's interval is because we can subtract it. We could also say that it's twice as hot, so it could be ratio. So if it's 101, we could say it was, it's twice as hot as on a day when it was 50 and a half degrees. So let's get rid of the interval. That would just be a ratio. The vehicle size classes for a sample of sedans are listed. Large, mid-size, compact, subcompact, and mini-compact. This is order. We're putting them in order based on their size. Okay. The four departments of a printing company are listed. This would be nominal. There's no way to put them in order. So we're just naming them. And lastly is the total compensations of millions of dollars of the top 10 CEOs. This would be ratio. We can say that this guy made more than twice as much as, as that one. That takes us to section 1.3. Term whether it's observational or experiment. Research to conduct a study to determine whether a drug used to treat hypo hypothyroidism works better when taken in the morning or when taken at bedtime. To perform the study, 90 patients are given one pill to take in the morning and one pill to take in the evening, one containing the drug and the other a placebo. After three months, patients are instructed to switch the pills. This would be an experiment. We're switching pills, we're given a placebo. Remember, they never give a placebo in an observational study. Researchers conduct a study to determine the number of falls women had during pregnancy. To perform the study, researchers contacted, so they're just contacting these women who had recently given birth and asking them how many times they fell. That's observational. They are not pushing pregnant women down to see how it affects the baby. In exercises 21 and 22, 200 students volunteer for an experiment to test the effects of sleep deprivation on memory recall. Students will be placed in one of five different treatment groups, including the control group. Explain how you can use an experiment so that it uses a randomized block design. So it's going to, they're going to be placed in five different treatment groups, right? So to use a randomized block design, we could take those 200 students and divide them by, say, whatever dorm they're sleeping in or whatever part of Aliquippa they're at so that we can create a block uh, and then randomize it. So randomize how we pick each person from the block. Explain how you could design an experiment so that it uses a completely randomized design. We could do a simple random sample for that uh, to make it completely randomized. And then we can use a number generator or a number table uh, to pick the 200 students. So we have a school. I have all the students from the school given the number and then do a random number generator to pick the 200. On your test, you're not going to be asked to do either of these two things. You're not going to be asked to uh, explain how to set up the experiment. We just haven't had enough um, experience with that at all. Identify the sampling technique used and discuss potential sources of bias. Use random digital dialing. Researchers ask 1,003 adults their plans on working during retirement. So if we're looking at what kind of study this is, 
So if we're looking what kind of study this is, this would be just a simple random sampling. We're using random digital dowling to pick the 1,003 U.S. adults. Number 24, if a student asks 18 friends to participate in a psychology experiment, that would be a convenient sampling. Much easier to ask your friends and to come up with a random number table and figure out how many people you want to have in it. Number 25, pregnancy study in Cebu, Philippines, randomly selects 33 communities from the Cebu metro, metropolitan area, then interviews all pregnant women in these communities. That is a stratified sampling. They're breaking the communities, or they're breaking the metropolitan area up into 33 different uh, communities. And then they are picking one from each, or women from each one of those communities. Number 26, uh, law enforcement officials stop and check the driver of every third vehicle for blood alcohol content. That is a systematic sampling. They have a system in place of picking every third car. Number 27. 25 students are randomly selected from each grade level at a high school and surveyed about their study habits. That would be a stratified sampling. They're picking students from each grade level, so that's how they're breaking it up. Breaking it up amongst grade levels, and then they are picking students from each one. Number 28, a journalist interviews 154 people waiting in their airport baggage claim and ask them how safe they feel during air travel. This would be a convenient sample. Jeez. The journalist is sitting there waiting at the airport baggage claim, and it's just the people who walk up. Okay, number 29, you're gonna use your random table. It's in your notes. Make sure you have your notes with you during your test. Uh, number 30. You want to know the favorite spring break destination among 15,000 students at a university. Determine whether you would take a census or use a sampling. If you would use a sampling, determine what sampling technique you would use. Explain your reason. Okay, so I would use a sampling for the simple fact that I don't want to talk to 15,000 different students. So I would use a sampling. Um, if you would use a sampling, decide what sampling technique you would use. There are a lot of different ones you could use. You could use strata, break it up amongst uh, grade levels, like are they seniors in college, juniors, sophomores, or freshmen. You could also do it based on uh, cluster sampling and just picking people from different dorms. So a lot of different possibilities for that one. As long as you have a good reason for it, I would not mark off. All right, that's it for the review.